If you're using Proxmox with local ZFS storage, you're probably wondering how you can back up your data using ZFS replication. By keeping the data in ZFS the entire time, we gain native snapshots and incremental backup abilities. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up ZFS replication between Proxmox and TrueNAS scale, but also why this is not necessarily a complete backup solution. So first let's look at Proxmox. I have two Proxmox systems here in a cluster and I have one TrueNAS system and all of these are going to be used in this test. So the Proxmox systems are both configured to use local ZFS storage. So when you create a new virtual machine or a container such as these two that I've created, um, they get stored on the ZFS system as a data set for containers and as a ZVOL for virtual machines. And this means that ZFS is managing the storage entirely on its own. QEMU is not doing uh, QCOW files or any of that stuff. Um, so because we're using ZVOLs and data sets, we should be able to just ZFS send or ZFS receive the data sets that, are, that back the container and the virtual machine. But that's not entirely how Proxmox works. So in Proxmox, if I go to this virtual machine and I say I want to back it up, and click Backup Now, uh, I have to tell it where I want to send the backup. Uh, so let's send it over to TrueNAS and let's send the snapshot back up and we're going to compress it. Let's see what that does. To start a backup task, what it's actually going to do here is it makes a snapshot in ZFS of the ZVOL that backs the virtual machine. Then it mounts that as a block device, compresses that using the Z standard compression we told it to, and generates an, a compressed image file. So that's the entire contents of the virtual machine compressed in a raw binary form. And then it sends that over the network to the storage location I told it to. So the only point in the process where ZFS is involved is, is making a clone of the existing ZVOL as a snapshot and then mounting that clone so that it can be writ read by the backup process. So once the snapshot is made in ZFS and once the backup's complete, the snapshot gets deleted and we don't even use ZFS anymore. Now another option you have is snapshots, and snapshots can be used to take a snapshot of the entire machine, including its memory. And when you do this, it does in fact take a snapshot in ZFS. So I take a snapshot here. It, it finished immediately, and now if we go to the system and we look at what snapshots we have. So do ZFS list type snapshot. You can see I have one snapshot, and it's the VM101 disk, and it's at the name ZFS test, which is the name I gave it in the snapshot. So you could just use ZFS snapshots to keep a history of your virtual machines in case anything happens to them, which is good to do. Um, but there's not a good way of scripting that in Proxmox. So if we go back to the, the back of here, so go to the, the, uh, the data center backup configuration. We can add a schedule. I know every 30 minutes, you can do every, send it to TrueNAS, and the problem with this is that this is doing a backup, where it's mounting the ZVOL, compressing it, and sending over the network. It's not doing a ZFS snapshot. So on the TrueNAS system, we're going to end up with a bunch of compressed image files that are files. They're not native ZFS ZVOLs, so TrueNAS isn't going to realize that each of them have a history with each other. And there's no way to create a backup job that does snapshots. There's only a way to do a backup job that does backups. So that's where this script comes in. So I found this script by searching for it. I'd like to really thank the author, April, and Dennis. And um, he wrote this script called Proxmox Autosnap. And it's basically just a Python script that you run as a cron job on the host system. And it periodically takes ZFS side snapshots. So if we go back to the Proxmox system, uh, we, have a, we have a snapshot here, and we can roll back to these snapshots uh, from, the, from the GUI, but we can't, take, we can't automate taking them from the GUI. So now that we have git installed, let's go through the commands one at a time and see what they do. The first one clones the git repository, so let's do that. So now it's here. Now we need to create symbolic links from our git repositories, auto snap file, and also the cron file. So we'll do both of those.
So the last thing that needs to happen that's not described in the manual is we need to make the script executable. So chmod plus x slash user slash local slash sbin slash proxmox autosnap.py. Now we should be able to test it. An example they have is just snap vmid all. There we go. So it created two snapshots called auto daily 220222, etc. And it made one for VM101, which is actually a container, and VM or VM100 is actually a container, and VM101. So let's go look at these and see if it made them. So what do you know? We have a new snapshot. So I have my ZFS test snapshot, and that feeds into the auto daily snapshot, and we're here. And on the container, similar thing. We have the auto daily snapshot. So because we also set up the cron jobs using this line to the default, which say to do them hourly, daily, and monthly, we should have a history of snapshots start to accumulate on the Proxmox system. And we can use that to do ZFS send and receive from TrueNAS. Or we could just leave them here and have snapshots periodically, which is useful on its own. So now in TrueNAS, we want TrueNAS to do a backup of these ZFS snapshots periodically. So first we need to get TrueNAS to connect to Proxmox. So we're going to add a backup credential, and we're going to add an SSH key pair, SSH connection. It'll add the key pair automatically. So we're going to call this PVE. And the backup method is manual because we're not going from TrueNAS to TrueNAS. So the host in this case is 172.27.8.228. Username is root, and we need to generate a new private key. So we discover the remote host key, save. So now that we've generated this SSH connection named PVE, we need to copy the key pair that we generated onto the Proxmox system as an authorized key. So let's click on this, and you can see we have the private key here, which we don't need, and we have the public key. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we see it says root at truenas.local. And unless your Proxmox system can resolve to your we should change this to the IP address or your proper DNS name. In this case, 172.27.8.227. So now I'm going to copy this entire public key here onto Proxmox. I'm going to go to the node in the shell, and I'm going to do nano slash etsy slash pve slash priv, priv slash authorized underscore keys. And we have a list here of two keys that are authorized, and we're going to paste ours as the third. Oop. Paste. I use the right-click menu. You can't see the right-click menu. So then we're going to save. And because this is on Etsy PVE, this gets synchronized to every other node in the cluster. So now that we created that key pair and added as an authorized key in Proxmox, we should be able to create a replication task in TrueNAS. So we're going to say the source location is on a different system because TrueNAS is going to pull the snapshots from Proxmox. We already have an SSH connection. On the source, we have Proxmox's R pool, and then the data is where the virtual machines and containers are stored. So I'm going to back up VM101 disk 0, which is a Zvol. And down here we come down and we uh, the, the script doesn't name snapshots the same way that TrueNAS expects. But I'm just going to tell it to back up all of them with a regular expression of dot star. We're going to name it uh, backup vm101. And then we need to come up here and give it a destination. So in my case, we have a pool called tank. And I want to put it in tank slash proxmox. And you can just type a name and it'll create a new one for you. Let's go next. So we want this to run. We could run it every daily. We could run it every hourly, whatever we want to do. I'm going to start with daily. And delete snapshot left, uh, destination snapshot lifetime, same as source. That basically means that when the snapshots get deleted on the remote system, they get deleted here too. So because the remote system is already dealing with pruning snapshots as they're not needed, we can let TrueNAS rely on its pruning to prune its snapshots on TrueNAS. So now that's pending, so let's run it. So we have a task in progress. Okay, that replication run finished, so let's go back to storage and see what we got. So we got a new thing called Proxmox. 
And if we view snapshots, we can see we have ZFS test and auto daily. So these are stored in TrueNAS now, and we could potentially back them up to Proxmox with, with a bit of work. And I'll explain more about why this might not be the best backup strategy later. So starting over without that data set, if we were to configure replication task to replicate the entire data, would that work? And the answer is right now it's no. So we want to say we want to back up our pooled data recursively. So that's going to back up all of the subvols and all of the, the zvols for all of the containers and VMs on Proxmox. And again, we're going to do all snapshots. Uh, we're going to put it in tank Proxmox, which I deleted, by the way, since my last uh, chapter. So it's not there. And we will again schedule it. And go. So now it's pending, so let's run it again and see what happens. In this case it failed right away. So why did it fail? So it says data set pool our pool data does not have any snapshots to replicate. So because we're using ZFS send and receive, TrueNAS is looking for snapshots to replicate. And on Proxmox, if we go to do a ZFS list, we have three snapshots now, but the, the data set data doesn't have any snapshots under it. So if we try to take snapshots for data and all of its children, then we can't take a snapshot for data because there are none. So what we have to do in this case is take a snapshot of data, preferably when it's already empty. Well, so what we have to do in this case is take a snapshot of data. And because snapshots of data sets don't contain snapshots of the data sets children data sets or children's evolves, the data won't actually, there won't actually be anything in the snapshot because the children have their own snapshots. So we'll create a snapshot of data just so that it exists and TrueNAS doesn't complain about not having any snapshots. ZFS snapshot our pool slash data at TrueNAS. There. So now if we list snapshots again, we have data at TrueNAS and then we have the subvol that's auto daily the VM disk that we created with ZFS test and the VM disk that was created with AutoDaily. So go back here to TrueNAS and it said data set does not have any matching snap snapshots to replicate. So if we run it again, is it going to work? So now it's running. If I click up here, you can see it's sending two out of four, three out of four. Three out of four is ZFS test, so it's kind of big. And we'll wait for that to finish. Now we got a success. So that backup finished. So if we go into storage and we look at snapshots, you can see we have the TrueNAS snapshot of Tank Proxmox, which on the other system is called our pool data. And then here we have VM101 disk zeros, two snapshots, and Subball100 disk zeros, one snapshot. So it did copy the snapshots from Proxmox to TrueNAS using ZFS send and receive. And we now have a backup of the VM's disk when the snapshot was taken. So I said earlier that it was possible, but it wasn't necessarily a good idea. And here's why. So we have a copy now of the subvol for a container or the zvol for a data set. And with that, we have the data on the VM's disk, but we don't have the entire VM's configuration. So if I go here and I click on hardware, you can see I've given it two gigs of memory, one processor core, I've set up BIOS, etc. All of this information would be lost. You would just have the data on the disk when you had to restore from TrueNAS. So when you do a Proxmox backup, it compresses the data disk, but it also takes all of this configuration information and bundles it with it together in a single file. And you lose that when you do ZFS send and receive backups. So does sending and receiving ZFS snapshots from Proxmox's local ZFS storage to and from TrueNAS work? Yes, it does work. Is it a good backup strategy? Maybe. So you get the advantage of copying your ZFS data as it is natively in ZFS. So you get all of the snapshots that get replicated. You don't get any of the configuration from Proxmox, which is a big downside. So you're going to have to back that up separately or do less frequent backups in Proxmox so you get the entire configuration. But it, it is functional and it could be part of a backup strategy if you want to use local ZFS storage on Proxmox. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing so YouTube can recommend more from me in the future.